everybody. Uh, it's Saturday and we survived the first week. Yay! Well, just about. <laughs> Not quite a week yet, but nearly. So uh, yeah, it's Saturday and this is going to be our last video of the week. Uh, I'm going to have tomorrow off, um, although I've got a lot of my own sewing to do. So if you're there, please say hello. Let me know if anybody's about. How are you all doing? Everybody okay? What have you got on your jobs list today? Anything exciting? No? Anything at all? Uh, my husband's gone out to do some foraging for food. Um, we've got six of us in the house because of all the kids being home. Um, it is, uh, it's the, the food cupboards are going down quite quickly. So, um, so he's gone out to do a food shop. Um, and what we're going to do today is we're going to go through some quilts as you go. Um, so, hi Linda. So I'm just going to give everybody a few minutes just to come online um, and do my usual waffle. Um, did you see last night we posted on our Facebook page that um, I spent, um, spent some time working out how to do a YouTube channel so that these videos, if you want to learn any of the techniques or go back through it, um, will be on our YouTube um, channel from now on. So luckily <laughs> I have some... Um, some boys who are very tech savvy. I am the mother of geeks, which is really lucky. And, uh, and yeah, Alex uh, helped me sort that out. So um, we've got a YouTube channel. All the videos have been uploaded onto there. So please, please do go along and just subscribe to the channel. Maybe watch a couple of the videos on there. Or you don't even have to watch all of them. Just watch a little bit of them and like them for me. There's a little little thumbs up on them. So if you can like them for me, that would be brilliant. Um, just means that our, you know, our ratings go up and stuff. Hi, Joe. Hi, Jen. Uh, hi, Sean. Cool. Oh, lots of people coming online. So... Um, so we're going to talk about Quilt As You Go today. I've had a request for me to go through the Quilt As You Go technique. Um, it is, um, it's lots of different versions of it. So I'm going to talk you through a couple. Um, the one that you can do if you're making your own blocks. And we're also going to talk about um, sewing directly onto wadding as well. Um, but um, I'm going to get going. So, um, hi Sue. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have, yeah. I know. Luckily, luckily, look, I've got and I've got five of them as well. So, um, so yeah, five sons, and they're all very tech savvy, which is cool. Um, so I'm going to pass you over to number three, son Drew. He's helping again today. So I'm going to flip you round, and then he's going to film me, and we're going to go through this. Okay, here we go. Say hi, Drew. And I'm going to give you the phone. There we go. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. Hope you can still see me. Okay, so um, there's a couple of techniques for quilts to go. Um, I'm going to talk you through both of them, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to quilt as you go your um, blocks if you're doing your own patterns, okay? So I'm going to move these ones out of the way a second. So we've got, obviously, you know, the whole joy of quilt as you go is that you don't have to put a whole quilt through your machine. You can quilt in small sections in the individual blocks and then join them together. And I'm going to show you my favourite method of joining. Um, there are lots of different ones out there, but this is the one that I find seems to work every single time I do it. Okay, it always just seems to work out right. So, what I've done is these are a couple of blocks that I'm gonna make. Lot I've made. Well, actually, I didn't make lots of. Leslie made all these for me. Okay, so I've made a little, made them up into a little quilt sandwich. So I've put a backing on and some wadding. Put the black back, the top on, the block on. And I've quilted it, okay? How you quilt is entirely up to you, but because you're only putting that amount through the machine, it's nice and easy, okay? It means you can be a bit more creative, means you can use some decorative stitchings and you're not wrestling a whole quilt through your machine, okay? So once you've quilted up your blocks, obviously you've got lots and lots of mini quilts like this, okay? You want to square them up, first of all. So I'm going to show you how to square them up. So I'm going to stand up. And I'm hoping Drew's going to go with me. And I'm just going to move those bits over there, out of the way. And I'm going to show you how I would square them up. So first of all, you want to decide on what size blocks they're going to be. So I think these ones are about 14 inches. Let's have a little look. Let me grab them. This is a mahoosive ruler. Um, but I do like it. It does, uh, it does help a lot. Yeah, so these are going to come up at 14 inches. Okay, so the first thing I would do is just find half of 14 inches is 7. Okay. So there's my, where the seven by the seven meets. And what I want to do is get that as central as possible. Okay. Okay, so about there. So I think my central point here is that little point there 
on this block. But this works for any block, whether you've done a log cabin or a nine patch or a churn dash, whatever block you do, you're going to square it up exactly the same way. OK, so I'm just making sure, like we did the other day, that my 14 inch line is within the fabric. Can you see it's it's that side of the fabric? OK, and then I'm going to cut up this side and along the top like that. And then I'm going to turn this cut edge to the bottom. Okay, and then I can line up the 14 by the 14. Now this block that I'm cutting up um, at the moment, I'm making a quilt out, was the scrappy log cabin hearts that we did in class a little while ago. Um, so all I'm doing is just carrying on quilting the blocks and joining them together. So there's my, my quilt block all, all squared up. Okay, So I'm going to do that again on the other one and then I can show you how we're going to join them. So how's everybody doing? Everybody okay? Weather's rubbish out there today. It's been so lovely, but today it's really horrible. It's really cold and I've had to put the heating back on and it's all sorts of uh, all sorts of manky out there. So how are you all doing? Everybody okay? Please do comment because Drew is reading and he will will let me know what you're saying if uh, if you've got any questions. Okay, so there we go. I'm turning that down to the bottom and then lining up my 14 by 14 again. Okay, there we go. Across there and across there. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of those bits out of the way. Like that. And like that. Okay, so there's my blocks, both of them, all squared up. Okay. Linda says, miss you all. Oh, we miss you too, darling. I hope you're okay, lovely. hope you're okay. Um, so yeah, blocks are all squared up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, we want to work join them together. Now you would do all your blocks, however many it's going to be, okay, and then you're going to um, do them into rows. So we're going to join them into rows first of all. So if you want to come back to me a second, Drew, sit down just a second. I'm going to show you how to do the joining. So I'm just going to get rid of all this out of the way. Pop that over there. So for your front sashing, so this is the piece of fabric that's going to be on the front to cut yourself a one inch strip of fabric okay so I just cut straight across the width of the fabric but you want a one inch strip okay and for the back which is going to be the bit that joins over the back you want a two inch strip okay now with the two inch strip you need to fold it in half just like you would with your binding you know when you bind your quilts okay where you, I normally use a two and a half inch but with the back of this you just need a two inch so you're just going to fold them in half raw edges together like that and go all the way along so just turn it's, this this way so it says hi but it's definitely colder today it is it's horrible out there today mm -hmm. oh really really chilly and like i said i had to put the heating back on because it's uh, not feeling and annie roberts said it hello it's sunny in, uh, but cold in plymouth oh nice Oh, I wish uh, wish it was sunny again here. It's been really nice to see the sun the last few days, but it's uh, it's not not at all today. It's really miserable out there. Okay, so I'm just ironing this one in half. Okay, I'm not going to do the whole thing because I won't need it. Helen says, "Hi, Sarah. Can you do something on squaring blocks? I still have problems." Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've just squared that one's up, but what I'll do is I'll put something together for next week. Tuesday about cutting and squaring using your ruler okay and we'll go through some of the ruler techniques about how to square things up um, how to get make the most out of your ruler okay so we'll do that Tuesday next week all right um, there you go this my this see it's always good to ask me questions and if there's stuff that you want to learn because uh, I've got to fill these slots with something haven't I <laughs> okay so what I want to do is I want to cut enough so it's just slightly longer than the block okay so about that much, you're going to use that bit later and you want the same with the front fabric, okay, about that much. So I'm going to join this one, and I want them to face in the same way, so I'm going to join this one to this one. So on this one here I'm going to lie the front sash in, right sides together, like that. I'm just going to grab my pin, sorry, okay, just two seconds, there we go. 
and I want to put the back sash in on the back of the block. Okay, so I find it easier to hold it up like this. So I've got my front sash in on the front and the back like that. And can you see all the raw edges are together? And I'm going to pop some pins just into here to hold it all down. So there's my front sash in and then my back sash in and you can see all those raw edges are together. There we go, like that. And front, I'm making sure that back's lined up. And pop a pin in. And then front and back. Put the last pin in. And then what you want to do is you want to sew a quarter an inch all the way down. Okay? So it is this this method, this particular method is done on a quarter of an inch, okay? So I'm going to scoot over to the sewing machine. Drew's going to follow me hopefully. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, again, you can use your quarter of an inch foot if you want, okay? But I find that sometimes that little guide just gets caught on these raw edges because you've got, you're going through, you know, quite a few layers of fabric and your wadding, okay? So I like to move my needle over. So I know on this machine, if I move my needle over, that needle is now a quarter of an inch away from this edge, okay? And what I'm going to do is... Just stitch down. Hopefully you're seeing this, ladies. And then I'm just gonna. And remember, because you're going through wadding, you might want to up your stitch length a little bit, okay? So I go up to about three when I'm doing this, just to give you know, make life easier on yourself. And I'm gonna sew all the way down here. Now take it slow and steady. Don't go too fast. down I'm keeping the, the fabric against the edge of the foot so that I've got a quarter inch seam all the way down. There we go. Okay. So I got the beast out today rather than my little brother and my big singers come out. Okay. So hopefully you can see Obviously, this is sewn a quarter of an inch away from the edge, and it's sewn through to the back as well. All right. And what you want to do, so we're going to scoot back over here, just so I can come to the iron, is you're now going to ignore that backing fabric, okay? Pretend it's not there for now. And you are going to press out the front fabric. And it is worth just doing this little pressing bit, okay? It helps give you, it gives you a much, much need to finish. And it makes everything lie flatter. Okay, so just press out that front fabric. Sue Hart asked, would you use a walking foot for this? You can use a walking foot as long as you can measure your quarter of an inch still with your walking foot. Absolutely, you can use your walking foot. Um, my, my machine tends to handle the wadding okay with this strip method. I would put my walking foot on for my quilting bit, but um, I tend to like to go back because I find it quite difficult to get the quarter of an inch with my walking foot. But if you're fine with that, absolutely go for it. Okay, so I've ironed this out, so hopefully you can see. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put, line them up again, making sure that they're the right way, that the hearts are the same way, or whatever pattern it is, but the way you want them to be. And I'm going to put these right sides together. Okay, and I'm going to line up this fabric here, that front sash in with the edge of the bottom block. Can you see? So that's now lined up with that edge. You also want to make sure that your blocks are lined up on this side bit as well. Okay? So it's no point having, the, having it lined up on that edge if you're not in line there as well. So you want to make sure they're lined up in both ways. So on the edges here, if you want to, pop a couple of pins further up here just to stop them slipping. And what you want to do is, I would definitely pin, now, you know I'm not a big pinner, okay, I don't do a lot of pinning, I'm a bit of a wing it girl, but I would pin this, okay, because you want it to be, um, you don't want it to move at all. So I'm going to pin that in, you see that front sash in is against that edge there, like that. Oh, that's a very bent pin, let's find a different one. <laughs> there we go, so I'm going to pin that. And now I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch again all the way down there. 
So we're going to go over to the machine again. Drew's going to follow me, hopefully. There we go. Okay, now go steady on this bit. Okay, once you get used to it, you'll be fine. But go when you first start doing this, go steady because you've got a lot of bulk on here. Okay, and if you've got a wider foot on, it's you know it's going to be slightly uneven. If you've got one of those really nice narrow straight feet and it can fit in this gap, even better. Use that. Okay, so I'm going to now stitch down quarter of an inch and just readjust if you need to to make sure that you're keeping this fabric on the edge of the foot, okay? Cara's watching. Cara's watching. Yeah. Hi, honey. How are you? That's my daughter-in-law. She's uh, stuck in London <laughs> with my son. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, <laughs> and self-isolating. So I hope you're not going too stir-crazy, honey. There we go. So what I've done is I've sewn all the way down there, quarter of an inch. We bring it over to the board again. <coughs> Hopefully, you'll see. So, I'm going to take those pins off here, there, and there. When I open this out, that wadding butts up together. Okay, hopefully, you can, Drew, if you want to go quite closely, hopefully, you can see what happens is that wadding butts together like that, so it's completely joined, and then this back piece. This is when you would now just iron this out. So I'm going to just turn it like that so you can see. And I can iron this. I would then press this over very gently. Okay. Press that over like that. And then you would slip stitch this down. Okay. So I'm just going to pin it down now out of the way. I keep getting that really bent pin. Okay. So I'm just going to pin that down like that. Kara says, all good. Lucky me. <laughs> There we go. So I'm going to pin that in. Okay. So that then covers that back. And on the front, you can see you've got this nice, neat sashing on the front. And you can't feel that join. Okay. People worry that they're going to be able to feel that it's not butted up. But you really can't. Using that this method, as long as your quarter of an inch is, um, is correct. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word then. Is correct. It will butt up together really nice and tightly and you won't be able to feel it. So you would then add your next block on and your next block and you would do a row, however many blocks you're going to go along. And once you've done as many rows as you need to, you use exactly the same method to join the rows. So I'm going to show you this one a second, which is a couple, just a little one I put together just so you can see. So you can see I put, oh, I go, <laughs> gone back too far for Drew. So. I put this one and this one together, and this one and this one, and then instead of doing short ones, I've gone, I go the whole length of the row, okay, so that when it flips out, I'll show you that now. Paula Pascal says, hello, this is exactly what I needed to learn today. Ah, oh, fabulous, brilliant, hi lovely, hope you're, uh, hope you're well, hope the pussycat's all, uh, all good as well. Okay, and there we go, so then you would fold this over, so Drew, if you want to come close, lovely. So you can see that this butts up. And then when you fold it over like this, you would just slip stitch that into place and you won't see it. Okay. Cool. Jenny asks, would you use the same method for the rows? Um, same method for, for the rows. Yeah, absolutely. So you would do the little short ones. Um, so if you just come up a second, oh. lovely. I didn't, uh, no. okay, sorry, I thought you meant. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> cool. Yeah, so Jen, so you would join your blocks in rows, okay, using that, that method I've just shown you. And then once you've got as many rows as you want, just cut longer strips, so a longer one inch for the front, the length of the row, and a longer two inch. You can join them, that's absolutely fine if they're longer than the width of fabric, and but do exactly the same. You know, do it on the front first, and then flip it over and do the back, okay? So, so that's one method of doing quilts you go, and it's nice and easy because it means that you can you can really play with your decorative stitching on the front of your blocks. All right, you can do as much or as, as little as you want, but you're only ever really dealing with one block under the machine at a time. Um, so much easier than wrestling a whole quilt. Okay, so 
that's the first method. Actually, if you hang on just a second, I'll see if I can show you something. Let me see if I can find this for you. Um, here we go. think to get this out earlier but so this was a course you go that we did in class oh about six months or so ago now okay and you can see hopefully on this quilt you'll be able to see that because because I was only dealing with this size block you can be a lot more creative with your quilting can you see on this one here so normally this wasn't free motion this was just done with my walking foot Okay, but you can see this like this little lotus flower design on here, and that was just done with my walking foot because it because I was only dealing with that size block. It means you can turn it under the machine so much easier. So if you struggle with free motion, this is really this is a really good method because it means you can play, and you don't just have to do straight line or diagonal quilting. Okay, so yeah, I don't know if you can see see some of these. I don't know if you can see. So it me it allows you to be a little bit more creative with your quilting doing this method. Okay, so I'm going to get that out of the way. Paula said, thank you very much. Really much easier. And cool. uh, Angela Seymour said, awesome. Brilliant. Fabulous. I'm glad you're all enjoying it, guys. So and Jenny says, that, fab, thank you. Yeah, make, all makes sense, hopefully. Um, so that's one method of doing it. Like I said, there are lots of other different methods, but that's the method I like. It seems to work all the time. Um, remember we do have all the June Taylor Quilt You Go packs as well so I'm going to show you those as well just so that you can um, just so you can know that these are on our website okay so these ones um, use exactly the same method so what you get in the pack is you get six blocks like this okay so rather than doing your quilt uh, your block and then quilting it yourself you would sew it directly onto the wadding but how you join the blocks is exactly how I've just shown you, okay? So I don't know if you can see on the picture here. Can you see this little thin sash in? Okay, that's exactly what I've just shown you. They do exactly the same method in these. So these are both on the website. I'm going to do a quick plug. These are both on the website um, under the Quilters You Go section, okay? So one's called London Lab Labyrinth, this one, which is brilliant for using with a jelly roll. So if you've got a jelly roll stashed away, we have got some of these left in stock. And then this one, which is Paris on Point, okay, um, is a lovely sort of square and square design and perfect for using up scraps and things that you've got in your stash. So quick plug on those, but they are exactly the same method as what I just showed you. Angela, do you need to drop the feed dogs with the walking foot? No, 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 absolutely not. No, you need the feed dogs up with a walking foot. The whole point. So um, I'll talk you through it. Hopefully this will make sense. So um, so when without a feed dog on with a normal foot, your feed dogs are coming up like this. OK, and they're grabbing the fabric and pushing it along. When you're quilting, if you don't have your walking foot on, the feed dogs are coming up like this and grabbing the bottom fabric, but there's nothing really to move the top fabric. So the fabrics move at different speeds, and that's why you get wrinkling and stuff. With a walking foot, it's designed to work at the same speed as those feed dogs. So as the feed dogs are doing that and coming up and grabbing the bottom fabric, your walking foot is walking along at the same rate as the feed dogs so that everything goes through nice and smoothly okay the only way reason you would drop your feed dogs is if you're doing free motion quilting okay or free motion embroidery and for that you need a darning foot or an embroidery foot on your on your machine and you drop your feed dogs or cover them whichever your machine does and that allows you to move the fabric in all directions okay um, and because you can move it in all directions means you can draw into things and you can make a lot more patterns you're not having to you know, hoist a whole quilt through. Um, hopefully that makes sense, guys, okay? Um, actually, if you want to practice free motion quilting, doing doing free motion on your, your blocks this sort of size is ideal because you're not having to struggle to move a whole quilt. You could just work into this size and practice, practice, okay? Um, the other thing with free motion quilting is 
Oh gosh, the wind is getting really, really strong out there. <laughs> I could hear the patio door uh, bump buff buffering then. Um, so you would drop your feed dogs and mm -hmm. put an uh, embroidery foot on, but you also want to drop your stitch length down to almost zero. So some mach some machines will go to zero, other machines will go to like 0.5. Because remember, if again, if um, you keep it at like two, two and a half, the machine is trying to drag the fabric in one direction and you might be trying to go around a curve. So you want the needle to go up and down at the same on the same point and you dictate which way it goes. Okay. Uh, Liz asked, how much are the quilts and would you bath them? How much are the quilts? The quilts you go packs, they are on the website, they're £16 and they will make a quilt which is a lap quilt or a baby quilt which is 24 by 36, hang on. 24 by 36, oh I've dragged that out of the back of my memory. But the nice thing about these is you can add as many packs together as you want. I know somebody who bought about six packs and did like a king size quilt because you just join the blocks. You make as many blocks as you want and you join them like I've done here, you know, in rows. Okay, but yeah, they're £16 and they're on the website. Um, they're normally about £18.99 but they're on at £16 at the moment. Um, sorry, what was the rest of Liz's question? And would remember. you back them? Yes, you'd back them first. So with these ones, okay, you would use your spray based, your 5 of 5 or your June Taylor based in spray. And you would spray the back of them and stick your backing fabric on and then you would start working on the top and hopefully you can see I don't know if Drew can get close enough can you see these have got numbers on so one two three four five etc you've got a full pattern in there in fact I can show you the pattern because I've got that here okay you can see so for the pattern for this one you can see it tells you exactly what to cut for each one and you would you'd put number one down you would add on number two and you you stitch and you flip it out so it's like stitch and flip but you would have your backing fabric on first and that way <coughs> sorry excuse me that way you would stitch through to the back okay and then you would join it like this like the method i showed you earlier okay any other questions um, anybody got anything they want to ask Paula asked, i'm thinking of doing a bed runner with five blocks would that work Absolutely, absolutely, Paula. Paolo, yeah. Um, so it's um, just join your bot blocks side by side, all five together, and it would it would look lovely across the end of a bed. Absolutely, work for, look, 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 that'd be a nice idea. Okay, any other questions, guys? Anybody got anything they want to ask? Anything you want me to go through again with this, or did this make sense? Everybody all right with that, yeah? Cool. Fab, that was a nice easy little tutorial today. Oh, we've whipped through that. Excellent. <laughs> so what are you guys going to be doing over the next few days? Are you going to get some sewing done? Are you going to have a little go at these blocks? I hope so. Um, remember, all I'm going to upload this to YouTube this afternoon. All the videos we've done over the last couple of weeks I will all be on the YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and um, just in the search bar type White Gecko Craft Lounge, you should be able to find um, all our uh, our channel there and all our little videos. There should also be our Hachanda videos. There's quite a few of those on there as well. Um, so you'll be able to see me and Paula on there <laughs> um, when I was doing the applique templates. So, so yes, um, have a little look at that. Um, anybody else got any questions? Anything that you'd like me to go through? Drew, is there anybody comments there? So I'm or? just I'm joining my heart then have the cave ones to join. Ah, cool. So you're joining your hearts at the moment and then you're going to do your curve it up, is it? Brilliant. Cool. It's a really good method. I use it a lot now. I mean, I, I'm very lucky that we've got, you know, Daphne, the long arm quilter in the shop. Um, so, you know, if I do have a big quilt, I can put it on there. But if you're struggling and you've just got a little home machine, then Quilt She Go is definitely the way to go. You can be, be really creative with it. Kate asks, have you got a large square ruler? And if so, how much are they? Uh, we do have a 15 and a half inch ruler, which is not quite as big as the one I was using earlier. Um, we have got one in the shop. I can't remember the price off my top, the top of my head, but I will check for you in a moment and I will message you. Okay. okay. And Jenny said, now can, can you now finally finish my Christmas coat? <laughs> yes, you can now finally finish your Christmas dress and plate quilt. <laughs> cool. Um, pictures, please, when you're done. I'd like to see them. I'd like to see it. 
Um, Fab, if nobody's got any other questions, um, I'm going to go because I've got a lot of bits to do today. Um, I, we will see you again on Monday. Um, we are going to do some amigurumi um, crochet on Monday. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be running through amigurumi on Monday. Tuesday, I'm going to do a, I'll do a little bit of a how-to um, with cutting and using your ruler and making the most of squaring up and everything. And then Wednesday, we're back to block of the week. So we'll have a new block for you on Wednesday. Um, if there's, again, if there's anything you want me to go through, if you, there's any, any questions you've got or a technique you want me to show, uh, to show you, I will do my very best to fit it in. So I've got nothing planned for Thursday at the moment. So if there's something you want, message us and let us know. Okay. Fab. Right. If nobody's got any other questions, thank you for joining us. And um, we'll see you on Monday. I'm going to have a day off tomorrow. I might sleep a little bit. Um, I think there's going to be a Scrabble tournament happening. And um, we've got some Taskmaster games to play as well. So, um, yeah, we'll see you Monday. Bye, guys. Thank you for joining me. Bye.